Hey, I'm Bazito from YSTech.org. Today we're going to be looking at benchmarks for forcing rebar on using the NVIDIA Profile Inspector for global settings. I have 12 games for you today and let's see how they perform with resizable bar on. Just to confirm as well, all testing will be done at 1080p, ray tracing will be turned off and DLSS will be turned off. Where possible, if other settings are turned on, I will let you know or it will say it on the graph. Let's see what the test system is. You can see all of these specs on the screen and even more on wirestech.org. For the CPU, I have my Ryzen 5 5600 which is stock. The graphics card is a Zotac RTX 3070 with 8 gigs of VRAM. It's also stock as well. The RAM I'm going to be using is 32 gigs of Patriot Viper on XMP at 3800 CL18. Let's head to the benchmarks. For the first game, we have a Plague Tale Requiem on ultra settings. There was a significant uplift in performance for this game in average FPS, going from 78.93 to 100.37 FPS when rebar is on. This was a 27% increase on average FPS. Unfortunately, the 1% lows fell slightly with a decrease in performance of 9.31% difference between rebar being on and off. Now this was a little bit of a surprise and a little bit disappointing for this title. Next up is Assassin's Creed Valhalla on the Ultra preset. Not too much of a difference here, with the uplift of the average FPS only being 1.55%. On the bright side, the 1% lows were much better at a 16.94% increase with rebar on and the game felt much smoother than before. Rebar kind of helped with the overall smoothness of this benchmark. Cyberpunk 2077 has something similar with the game feeling much smoother with rebar on. There was a small increase in average FPS being 8.01% but 1% lows had a major improvement going from 358 to 64.5 FPS which is an increase of 80%. I'm quite happy with this result. Next up is Forza Horizon 5 on Ultra settings. This one was a bit surprising with both the 1% lows and the average FPS having decent uplifts as a whole. The average FPS increased by 14.27% and the 1% lows having a solid uplift of 61.26%. I'd really like to see how this game performs in 1440p with rebar on and off because of the 1080p result. I think the scaling should be pretty decent with the rebar on hopefully if we do retesting in the future. GTA 5 is one of the titles where rebar off was actually better than when it was on. There was a 6.36% decrease in performance for average FPS and a reduction of 13% in 1% lows. Not too sure what happened with this one and it might require some retesting in the future. Hogwarts Legacy is up next and this troublesome title has a slight increase in average FPS being 16.30% and 1% lows only improved by around about 6.53%. Unfortunately, smoothness of Hogwarts Legacy was still about the same and didn't improve too much for the runs I did. A little bit disappointing for this one because I really wanted it to improve, it really seems like this title is just annoying to run, but it is what it is with the rebar on and off. Horizon Zero Dawn on Ultra settings had a nice improvement overall. The game was much smoother and the 1% lows increased by 59% which is quite hefty. The average FPS had a solid increase going from 111.90 to 127.90 which is a difference of 16 FPS which I'm pretty happy with. Our first esport title is League of Legends and I really didn't expect much out of this game for improvement with rebar. The 1% lows were better with rebar on by 15.54% and only a minor improvement with the average FPS being around about a 5% increase. I didn't expect too much for this one but I mean at least there's a little bit of improvement for ARAM in League of Legends. Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart is a title I really wanted to see with rebar enabled. Unfortunately, it only helped slightly. The 1% lows were at a 17.91 
5% increase and helping the overall smoothness and experience of the game, but in my opinion, disappointingly, there was only a 7% increase in average FPS. But I think what we're reaching here is the maximum of what the system could output for the RTX 3070. It is a nice improvement in the 1% lows and it definitely does feel better overall. Shadow of the Tomb Raider unfortunately pretty much played out the same with Rebar on and off. Only a slight increase in FPS by 1.92%, if you can even call that an improvement, I don't really think so. But the game performed well in either case, I mean, you're pretty much experiencing the same thing either way. The Callisto Protocol on high settings honestly didn't have much of an impact when Rebar was on for the average FPS or the 1% lows with both only having a 1.13 increase for average FPS and a 1.88 increase for 1% lows. Not the best for this title unfortunately. Now Valorant was surprising being our second esport title and I really was not expecting much at all. On average FPS, Valorant improved by a solid 13.12% and the 1% lows had an increase of 23.43% which was a really nice improvement. I guess a game like Valorant with more FPS is technically better and I could feel the improvement in death matches that I played. However, on a side note, I do play Valorant very often and just as a pure feeling with Reba enabled in unrated and ranked matches I personally could not feel too much of a difference but this could just be down to perception for myself but I guess there's no real downside to having Reba on in this title. Overall, there were some good results with Rebar on with significant improvements coming from a Plague Tale Requiem being a 21% difference for average FPS, but that doesn't mean that the full game experience was that great, as I'll explain in the next graph. Notably, GTA 5 performed worse and the Callisto Protocol, AC Valhalla and Tomb Raider all didn't have too much of an impact on performance for average FPS. I think the 7% difference is actually a decent overall performance from the 12 of games for average FPS and with not too much drawbacks in game. Next with the 1% lows average, we have around about a 7% difference which is decent for helping stutter in some of these 12 games. Cyberpunk felt much smoother and had a 57% percentage difference when Rebar was turned on. A Plague Tale Requiem and GTA 5 were worse off and I really didn't expect Plague Tale's 1% lows to actually fall here but overall not a bad result at all. What are my final thoughts? Besides GTA 5 and a Plague Tale Requiem, there really wasn't too much downside to having Rebar enabled. From what I could see, the 1% lows had a solid improvement for some games. Just a note, while a Plague Tale Requiem's average FPS went up, the 1% lows average went down, which is really not ideal and is a scenario where the global setting doesn't actually help the game. However, on the bright side, there doesn't seem to be too much of a disadvantage to having Rebar on and is something you should consider turning on if you have a system that supports it. I myself regularly play a few select titles of games being League of Legends, Valorant and Warframe and I haven't really experienced any problems so far. Resizable bar still feels in a weird spot from Nvidia in terms of support and turning it on through the NVIDIA profile inspector, for the global settings at least, but I believe that you should probably give it a go and turn it on given the benchmarks that I went through. If it's causing you issues in frame times or just average FPS drops, then you can turn it off again. In essence, resizable bar is a feature that is already on some systems, so you might as well take advantage of it. It's not like another paid feature that you have to go through a paywall in order to get. It's already there, so personally, I would probably turn it on. Again, if it's causing you issues, then you just have to turn it off. Just a quick note as well, if you're having issues with enabling rebar, you might need to update your BIOS version on the motherboard you're on. On my Gigabyte B550, 
150. While I could enable rebar in the BIOS, it was actually showing up when I checked in Windows on NVIDIA Control Panel and GPU Z as being off. So I did have to update the BIOS once again to get it working. It wasn't that hard, but just a quick side note on that one. What I am interested is in the scaling performance of rebar on 1440p with my RTX 3070 and the 8 gig VRAM limitation to see if it helps in games where the VRAM is an issue. If you want to see that video or have some other games you want tested, let me know in the comments. That about sums up the video. Thank you for watching. Check out ystech.org for some more awesome content. But other than that, stay safe, stay healthy, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!